Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. We're so happy to see you finally here after a lot of emails back and forth with our colleagues in Pakistan. Um, it's a very, it's a huge privilege for us here at Ajar, Asia Justice and Rights, to be your host. Uh, I think the team here has worked very hard to try to bring the best resource persons to introduce Indonesia to you. Uh, sometimes it's stepping away from your home context, uh, there can be some aha moments because you've been, you have a bit of space between you and the issues, the problems that you face daily. And hopefully by meeting both um, some of our more progressive um, leaders and thinkers, both in government or before we're in government, former government, uh, people and also with the Human Rights Commission, the Women's Commission, as well as civil society, it can be a space uh, to, to look at how we in Indonesia, still surrounded by impunity, still struggling to bring uh, human rights, right now in the middle of Jakarta it's a bit glary, it seems like we're very modern and very successful maybe, but actually beneath that veneer we have we are still struggling with very huge issues particularly around human rights and justice and then i want to ask each of you if you find one person in this room that you never met before you never talked to before the band and said, uh, let's just uh, lay behind the, 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 the proposal of Sari Alo. In 1950, also 56, 59, when we established a constituent, what we call constituent, uh, constitutional commission. Also this debate on Article 29 actually <coughs> colored the result that finally President Sukarno issued a presidential decree that we stopped the process and come back to the 1945 constitution instead of agree on the new constitution. You are too many, you have too many <coughs> special courts. It means that the regular just justice system in Indonesia is not de delivering. When we, when we go for some special court, it means that regular system, there is some weakness in regular system. In Indonesia have um, three main similarities, uh, military rules, transition towards democracy and uh, constitutional reforms. Uh, in Pakistan, uh, uh, after uh, 1973, we have 18 amendments uh, in our constitution uh, uh, through which we have uh, devolved our main 19 ministry uh, to the provinces. And now the provinces are more autonomous and they have more parts to deal their own businesses. The third name is uh, economic, social, cultural right. We have right to development. There are three paragraphs which is specific on right to development. Why is it so important to right to development? Because you see the 10 member countries, there are poor countries in this region, the richest country in this region. So that should be more equal. If not, if it is not equal at all. Right. Of course, like uh, in most any other countries, in Indonesia we have uh, uh, 
basically two categories of uh, legal recognition and guarantees. First of all, what we call it basic legislation. In Indonesia, we have uh, first the constitution. Number two is the decree of the People's Consultative uh, Council. And num number three is law number 39 on human rights. Especially Pakistan and India, they have not a good history as far as their mutual relations are concerned. And we have Kashmir issue as well, which is still a major issue which is to be resolved between Pakistan and India. <coughs> so that we should come here and with uh, those issues with Pakistan and have uh, some discussion on it. And uh, secondly, the supplementary of this question would be that how you are handling and controlling the situation of the human rights. At some point, of course, there is a domestic situation as well, including tsunami. At some point, Indonesia uh, managed to stop the conflict after tsunami and gave Aceh special autonomy, special uh, governance autonomy. Papua actually received the same special autonomy, but uh, the situation in Papua uh, is not really improved. So the conflict remains continue until today. What I will present is something according to the law. Yeah, it's 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 fit with the existing law, but unfortunately, it's against human rights principles. In Indonesia, there is examples I want to explain in detail and how to, you know, revise the existing law and government practice in order to make it, you know, uh, uh, comply with the human rights principle. Prior to that, the lands are given to the male adult farmers, but now the revolutionary change has, has happened that the thousands of acres have been given to the landless farmers who are uh, who have been allotted the sanats. We call it as a sanats as in such a way that these are certificates. So we call it as a sanats in city language. So thanks for this uh, knowledgeable presentation. There's just a question I have that the indigenous people you have mentioned, and uh, of course there's a convention regarding the rights of Indian people. So we have to define the indigenous people. Ah. What is meant by the indigenous people? For example, for me, so my forefathers, I'm basically my forefathers came from Arab, maybe thousands years ago. Yes. And in 60, they were living in uh, Delhi first. Uh, they came in central, the center of India, Delhi. Then they moved from Delhi to Punjab. Then in 1657, I think they moved into the Mount Kashmir. So I don't know whether I am indigenous people of Jammu and Kashmir or I am indigenous of Punjab or still I have to request my Arab ancestral land. So please clarify this question. We have the similar sort of uh, democratic transitions and uh, similar sort of human issues related with the democratic transitions and I hope that we are going to uh, learn a lot about the successful models here and the lesson learned from the innovation. So I would like to say that after I have investigated with the victims all over Indonesia, there is no sign, no evidence that Indonesian Communist Party take over. There is no proof they collect the, the weapons or organize the people, completely not. We are realists, we cannot move freely. Just only to move from one region to the others, or from the city to other city, we have to report to the military. And until now, I can say until now, yeah, we cannot speak loud. Setelah tuntutan keadilan pengadilan itu tidak terwujud, ada kesadaran, tumbuhnya kesadaran di kalangan kelompok-kelompok uh, korban ini, sehingga perlu langkah bersama atau strategi bersama supaya korban yang tadinya menuntut secara sendiri-sendiri itu bisa apa namanya bisa merumuskan tuntutan yang lebih sistematis karena yang dituntut sama tapi eh, sebelumnya kan masing-masing ada 
kesamaan, ada strategi bersama antara korban dan masyarakat sipil. categories. First is violence against women, which is occur in personal areas. And the second one is the violence against women, which is occur in public areas, for example, like rape, sexual violence, sexual harassment in public areas. And the third one is a violence against women, which is uh, conducted by, which is involved a state official. Four commissions, uh, four commissions completed their tenure in 2012. And uh, in 2012, the NCSW was established to an act of parliament. It comprises of chairperson, members from all provinces, ex official members, which include representatives of the government of Pakistan, like uh, ministries from uh, establishment region and finance, interior, law ministry. And they also have the power of the civil court. Yeah, I think the, the issue of Kashmir is basically the issue of human rights. As you see, the, we, the Kashmiris, they have been pledged by the United Nations. Uh, about their right of self-determination, that they will decide by themselves either they wish to join with India or with Pakistan. And uh, this uh, this was pledged even in 1948. And after this uh, uh, International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, uh, Article 4 is about the self right of self-determination. So this is the uh, this is the, uh, the 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 future of the. Uh, Kashmir is basically the uh, determination of the right of self, you see, self, uh, you see, uh, self uh, determinacy, self determination. So this is the basic human rights, uh, you see, uh, human rights, uh, you see, issue. from the circles of injustice, oppression, slavery, 
money lending practices and all forms of discrimination and violence. Khususnya sebagai perempuan, kalau dilihat dari sebagai anggota keluarga, sebagai masyarakat, dan sebagai warga negara. Saya melihat justru perbedaan antara laki-laki dan perempuan itu baru terjadi ketika syariat Islam diterapkan. Kalau dulu saya tidak pernah merasa ada perbedaan antara perempuan dan laki-laki. Today, uh, the session which was focused on human rights and uh, Islam was uh, very useful for us because the area from where we, are, we belong, that uh, the Islamic concepts are perverted and they are made like uh, Islam is uh, something and human rights are something different. But today, the uh, honorable people who came and they presented the, their sessions, uh, it gave a lot of uh, uh, thoughts to us and it proved that uh, Islam itself is a basically a, a religion which embedded the human rights in, in it and uh, all the exercises of Islamic practices ensures the extremely human rights uh, activities. Actually, we learned so much more here because this was much closer to our context than the British, the British system. Um, and so one of our focuses in Ajar is to, to, to open up these lessons between countries which have a lot in common. And I was very interested to hear some of your comments about the things that uh, Pakistan and Indonesia have in common and the things that they don't have in common. Uh, but there are many similarities, and I hadn't, I hadn't thought of some of them that were mentioned uh, in relation to the autonomous regions, for example, Sharia law in Aceh and some of your regional um, aspects. So um, 
I've also learned something out of that, but that's also something to, to focus on. I'm Nashad Khan, uh, working as section officer in the Ministry of Law, Justice and Human, Human Rights, uh, Pakistan at Islamabad, uh, dealing with the service matters of our uh, officer cadre employees. Uh, I've just completed a one week, I think uh, one day more than one week uh, training on uh, human rights and in Indonesia, uh, being a third country, we have witnessed a lot of experiences, particularly the constitutional uh, framework of Indonesia, uh, the human rights uh, institutions. We have visited a lot of uh, entities and uh, gained a sufficient knowledge. Uh, we have both Pakistan and India, uh, Pakistan and Indonesia, sorry. I have a similar uh, perspectives, particular to the religious background, the military dictatorships in the past, and uh, are uh, going through a transitional phase. And I think uh, we will uh, contribute in a better way the experiences we have learned here to convert in our society in Pakistan. I have been, I have been nominated for uh, the screening course. I had, I was um, a bit of, uh, I had a bit of confusion. I was clueless. Uh, although the things were mentioned uh, theoretically in the training manual that uh, uh, the training would help uh, to learn about the coordination mechanisms between different human rights institutions, and etc. But uh, still, I did not have a kind of solid idea what would I really be doing over here. So I, uh, first of all, I would like to appreciate the thing that we had been given uh, the opportunity to pre prepare our own action plans, which uh, helped us to sort out our ideas in the end. Uh, two countries, Indonesia and Pakistan, because uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, commonalities in terms of the what happened in the country, the, the conflict, the challenge, the, the people we even have, uh, we, we share the situation uh, where uh, uh, those two countries, uh, majority Muslim, so I think uh, it would be good for, uh, for both countries to, to share the experience, how to deal with the uh, with issues. Uh, we don't just uh, let, uh, allow them to learn about Indonesia, but actually Ajar uh, here also learn from uh, their context. So this is a good opportunity for Ajar to, to, to see how the how the South-South relationship can be developed uh, in this uh, region. I think that's why. Yeah.